Hi there, we're just going to do a quick little tutorial on working in Photoshop again using a 3D option to not extrude necessarily but to revolve an object or lathe out an object. I've drawn a path here of half of what I'll call a bowl and this again is just a vector path done with the pen tool within Photoshop. So once this path is drawn, I'm going to go up under my 3D menu. I'm going to come down and I'm going to do a 3D extrusion from selected path. Now I know what you're thinking. You're thinking the same thing I did. Why am I doing an extrusion when I want to do a lathe or a revolve? Well, once you get this done, you're going to go over to your properties panel and you're going to come down and there's a couple icons on the top here. The first one looks like a star. The next one over here is deform. Deform. I'm going to click on deform and down below here is a horizontal angle percentage value, a bend. I'm going to change this to 360 degrees. And I'm going to hit enter. So now what it does, it takes the extrusion and it bends it around a 360 degrees circle. So that's how you can make some shapes. If you need a shape like this within dimension, you can't necessarily do it at all because you don't have any Boolean operations to do it. So this is another way to cut an opening out or make a bowl or a, something like this where you just draw a shape out, half of it, and then you do this horizontal angle or 360 to build it within Photoshop. Now here's a couple of gotchas. Up in the upper right hand corner it says deformation axis. Now I'm going to put this back basically, let's see if I can get it kind of like that. I'm going to go up here and I'm going to look at this little proxy here. See the proxy dots in the center. I'm going to move the um, deformation axis over here to the right. And that doesn't appear to do anything other than make it larger. Now there's a hole in there and we'll talk about that in a second. So let's go back. Let's move the deformation axis point back to center. And then to the left. Whoa, it's a whole different situation because it's picking a different vertical axis to do that revolve or that horizontal 360 angle on. So you can make some crazy shapes here. You might not know how to do it initially, but if you keep working with these values, you might discover how you can build something that you actually need. Another thing that you can toy with, and I haven't done it a lot, is over here is a vertical angle. You know, it, this is kind of crazy. I don't know where your imagination starts and stops on here. You know, I need a cone. I need a radar dish. I need a speaker. Uh, it's very crazy stuff. So I'm going to set this back to zero while the getting's good here. And I'm going to actually see if I can move the deformations over here to the middle. And it looks like at this point... Photoshop is mad at me. Let me go to my history panel, see if I can get out of here. Let's see, 3D. Here we go. Thank goodness for the history panel. So let me go back over here and I'll close my history panel. And I have this shape here. Also, when I go in and I start orbiting my uh, shape around here, sometimes the information will stutter on the screen so don't be too alarmed with it. I think it's just a memory issue within Photoshop and so on and so forth but notice that hole there if you do get a hole within an object on the bottom if you go up and make sure you're on deform and come over here and make sure you change your extrusion depth to around zero and then if you have still a little hole there 
I found if I highlight the field under extrusion depth and hit my up arrow a few times, just to a little bit, two or three tenths of a centimeter, and that sometimes will close that hole up. Again, Photoshop is hanging up on me here a little bit and giving me fits. Let me go back over to my 3D panel here and somehow I clicked on the actual scene. Let me put this back like this and come over here and click on the layer one in 3D so I can move the actual object around. So notice there's a, looks to be like a hole in there. So I run this extrusion depth up with my cursor arrow and sometimes if I run this up enough, that will actually go away. Now let's check it here. Let's go 3D and I'm gonna render the 3D layer and see if my computer will blow up here. I'm running on 16 gigs of RAM here with Photoshop plus the recording. So this looks really fine. I don't have a problem with this at all. So I'm gonna hit escape and I'm gonna Make sure I'm on layer one, which has the object, and I'm gonna to try to orbit this around a little bit. Also, something I've discovered is that if I try to add caps to this, like bevel edges, and I go front and back, or even just front or back, and I change the width over here, like I would normally like to do, I don't see any change in the Photoshop file on the screen. So I'm not sure why that's happening. Okay, let's take this 3D object that we made. I'm gonna export the 3D layer and just bring it into dimension. I'm gonna come down to OBJ format. I'm gonna click okay. I'm gonna name this bowl two. I'm going to uh, come over here and I'm gonna come back over to dimension. I'm gonna do an import to bowl two object and it will put it here. I'm gonna click on a little widget to bring it in screen. Uh, let me turn off my immediate preview here. Let me back out a little bit with three. I'll dolly out. And also looks like I'm gonna use my orbit tool, kind of look around at the object. Next, I may actually click on the object and I'm gonna rotate it a little bit. I think when I manipulate the orbit, of the actual object in Photoshop. That's why it comes in weird here. Now I'm gonna try something. Let me tilt this here. And then I'm gonna go up over here to object and I'm gonna try uh, drop to ground. Let's see what happens. Look at that. It flattened it right out and moved it right to the ground. So I didn't even have to try to manipulate the axes to get it in there. I'm gonna undo that. Let's try the other one. We'll go over here to move to ground. Now what that did, it just moved the closest surface to the ground it appears and put it there. So this is a great tool, drop to ground. So now I can just hold down my orbit tool and look at my object, go over here and apply some material to it and go ahead and render it out. Let's see what it looks like here if it renders relatively fast. I'm not sure about why this is looking so weird. Let me do something more of straight plastic. Could be the pattern. It looks like that is the case. Let me click on my base color. Let me change it over here to something else. Click away from it. Okay, that looks pretty good. Now this little seam here, I really don't know what that is other than maybe I didn't draw the path perfectly straight when I drew the uh, path I was gonna rotate in Photoshop. Also this curvature on top, right here, this curvature, that's a result of Photoshop and the path I drew. I'm not sure I can go all the way back to path, but let me go up here just for a second and I'm gonna go up and I'm gonna pick new layer and I'm gonna take my zoom tool and I'm gonna zoom up on this a little bit. Hold my space bar down. Yeah, I'm not sure why it's giving me that lip there. It could be 
that these anchor points are not absolutely perfectly lined up. Uh, that's something I would have to experiment with and do another extrusion and so on and so forth. But this curvature, of course, you know is from me putting that curve in there. So, just want to let you know you can do a revolve on an extrusion within Photoshop. Uh, have a great time. Try some of those other weird options and see what you can create. Thanks.